Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some words by Oswald Chambers. The first one is titled, Complete and Effective Dominion. Death no longer has dominion over him. The life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God. Romans 6, verses 9 through 11. Co-eternal life. Eternal life is the life which Jesus Christ exhibited on the human level. And it is this same life, not simply a copy of it, which is made evident in our mortal flesh when we are born again. Eternal life is not a gift from God. Eternal life is the gift of God. The energy and the power which was so very evident in Jesus will be exhibited in us by an act of the absolute sovereign grace of God once we have made that complete and effective decision about sin. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Acts 1 verse 8, not power as a gift from the Holy Spirit, the power is the Holy Spirit, not something that he gives us. The life that was in Jesus becomes ours because of his cross. Once we make the decision to be identified with him, if it is difficult to get right with God, it is because we refuse to make this moral decision about sin. But once we do decide, the full life of God comes in immediately. Jesus came to give us an endless supply of life, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3 verse 19 Eternal life has nothing to do with time. It is the life which Jesus lived when he was down here, and the only source of life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the weakest saint can experience the power of the deity of the Son of God when he is willing to let go. But any effort to hang on to the least bit of our own power will only diminish the life of Jesus in us. We have to keep letting go, and slowly but surely, the great full life of God will invade us, penetrating every part. Then Jesus will have complete and effective dominion in us, and people will take notice that we have been with him. And that's the end of the first one in the Second one is titled, What to do when your burden is overwhelming. Cast your burden on the Lord. Psalm 55, verse 22. We must recognize the difference between burdens that are right for us to bear and burdens that are wrong. We should never bear the burdens of sin or doubt. But there are some burdens placed on us by God, which he does not intend to lift off. God wants us to roll them back on him, to literally cast your burden, which he has given you, on the Lord. If we set out to serve God and do his work, but get out of touch with him, the sense of responsibility we feel will be overwhelming and defeating. But if we will only roll back on God, the burdens he has placed on us, he will take away that immense feeling of responsibility, replacing it with an awareness and understanding of himself and his presence. Many servants set out to serve God with great courage and with the right motives, but with no intimate fellowship with Jesus Christ, they are soon defeated. They do not know what to do with their burden, and it produces weariness in their lives. Others will see this and say, 
What a sad end to something that had such a great beginning. Cast your burden on the Lord. You have been bearing it all, but you need to deliberately place one end on God's shoulder. The government will be upon his shoulder. Isaiah 9 verse 6. Commit to God whatever burden he has placed on you. Don't just cast it aside, but put it over onto him and place yourself there with it. You will see that your burden is then lightened by the sense of companionship, but you should never try to separate yourself from your burden. And that's the end of that one. And the next one is titled Inner Invincibility. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Matthew 11, verse 29. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Hebrews 12, verse 6. How petty our complaining is. Our Lord begins to bring us to the point where we can have fellowship with him, only to hear us moan and groan, saying, O oh Lord, just let me be like other people. Jesus is asking us to get beside him and take one end of the yoke so that we can pull together. That's why Jesus says to us, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11 verse 30 Are you closely identified with the Lord Jesus like that? If so, you will thank God when you feel the pressure of his hand upon you. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Isaiah 40 verse 29. God comes and takes us out of our emotionalism, and then our complaining turns into a hymn of praise. The only way to know the strength of God is to take the yoke of Jesus upon us and to learn from him. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Where do the saints get their joy? If we did not know some Christians well, we might think from just observing them that they have no burdens at all to bear. But we must lift the veil from our eyes. The fact that the peace, light, and joy of God is in them is proof that a burden is there as well. The burden that God places on us squeezes the grapes in our lives and produces the wine. But most of us see only the wine and not the burden. No power on earth or in hell can conquer the Spirit of God living within the human spirit. It creates an inner invincibility if your life is producing only a wine instead of the wine, then ruthlessly kick it out. It is definitely a crime for a Christian to be weak in God's strength. And that's the end of that one. And the, sorry, the final one I'd like to share with you is titled, The Failure to Pay Close Attention. The high places were not removed from Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was loyal all his days. Second Chronicles 15 verse 17 Asa was not completely obedient in the outward, visible areas of his life. He was obedient in what he considered the most important areas, but he was not entirely right. Beware of ever thinking, oh, that thing in my life doesn't matter much. The fact that it doesn't matter much to you may mean that it matters a great deal to God. Nothing should be considered a trivial matter by a child of God. How much longer are we going to prevent God from teaching us even one thing? But he keeps trying to teach us and he never loses patience. You say, I know I am right with God, yet 
the high places still remain in your life. There is still an area of disobedience. Do you protest that your heart is right with God, and yet there is something in your life he causes you to doubt? Whenever God causes a doubt about something, stop it immediately, no matter what it may be. Nothing in our lives is a mere insignificant detail to God. Are there some things regarding your physical or intellectual life to which you have been paying no attention at all? If so, you may think you are all correct in the important areas, but you are careless, you are failing to concentrate or to focus properly, you no more need a day off from spiritual concentration on matters in your life than your heart needs a day off from beating. As you cannot take a day off morally and remain moral, neither can you take a day off spiritually and remain spiritual. God wants you to be entirely His, and it requires paying close attention to keep yourself fit. It also takes a tremendous amount of time. Yet some of us expect to rise above all of our problems, going from one mountaintop experience to another with only a few minutes effort. And that is the end of these words by Oswald Chambers. I pray that you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.